So welcome to Governance Board. Uh, let me share my screen and we can take a look at the agenda. So items I had were news, CD events, I think was a carryover from last time, Google Summer of Code, a proposal to cancel the governance meeting in two weeks and highlights from the mailing list. Any other topics we need to put on the list? Uh, well, uh, there is a request uh, from Herve about access uh, to infrastructure, I mean, administrative access. So I wanted to, uh, to discuss it briefly because it looks like we started the circumventing uh, CLA a lot. So I just want to agree what would be the expectation there. Okay, good. All right. Any other topics to be included? All right, uh, let's disconnect it. Let's take that one first then. Uh, so I think Oleg, you're referencing that um, Hervé Lemur had sent a request asking for access to the Jenkins Infra org, right? Uh, yeah, and also to security uh, bug tracker. So both uh, these uh, requests naturally require CLA to be signed. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, I just want to ensure that we keep requiring requirement of it. Yeah, so I, I agree that that makes sense. Uh, signed CLA and for right now, I assume it would be done with the following the existing process. Uh, yeah, I can enable uh, easy CLA right now for this repository. I was about to drink it ahead of the meeting, but yeah, I didn't. Okay. Uh, so I think that uh, I will actually enable it. Great. And I, and I think that makes sense. I think it's good that we remind each other that, hey, we need a, a contributor license agreement for certain roles and mm -hmm. encourage it. Yeah, speaking of that, uh, I'm still a manager for CloudBiz CLA on the Linux Foundation. Uh, so if someone uh, from CloudBiz has concerns about that, probably they need to follow up because I have no idea why and I have no idea what to do with that. Okay, good. Yeah, so Mark to uh, check with Linux Foundation on how to how to how to update that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm also a manager for the CDF, so I will get uh, it enabled. Okay. Anything else on the administrative access request? I we had a similar thing going on. I'm not sure it's where we, we know that we need CLAs before we allow someone to become a member of the docs copy editors group. Uh, well, but so but generally we haven't done our that agreement yet. Uh, was that uh, every role that requires special permissions uh, for the Jenkins core for infrastructure should go through CLA. And uh, for example, if you uh, pull request reviewer, etc., doesn't require special permissions. Uh, but uh, yeah, competitor role does. So Great. I would okay. prefer that it actually goes through the process. Excellent. Yeah, and that, that makes sense to me. Anything, anything else on that topic? Oh, oops, and we, sorry, we skipped news. My, my apologies. Okay, if we go back to news for a minute. Okay. Okay. So there it was, we had a, a zero day on Friday, uh, Apache log for J2 uh, versions up through 2.14.0 had a zero day that apparently was being actively exploited as well. Uh, there's a blog post about it and a Jira epic tracking it. Jenkins core by itself is not vulnerable. Uh, and a relatively small number, about 12 plugins are vulnerable and there are how to detect, how to mitigate included in that JIRA epic. 
And so from uh, all affected plugins, uh, I'm concerned only about audit log because uh, this is a plugin which is likely to be used uh, by enterprises. At the same time, uh, there are known performance issues. So I'm not sure how many actually use it. But from all the plugins, so this is actually the only plugin I would be concerned about. Great. Okay, good. The other news, uh, we've got new changes in current in the most recently released weekly for the plugin manager UI. It looks very nice. Special thanks to Jan Farachik. Uh, and thanks to Basil Crow, a groovy upgrade is coming in the next weekly. 2.4.12 inside Jenkins will be 2.4.21. Thanks to Devin Nussbaum and Jesse Glick for reviewing the pull request. And we've got a Jenkins LTS that's been, its release date has been shifted from the more the typical four weeks to be six weeks so that we can let people have some time off at the end of the calendar year. So January 12 will be the release date. Mm -hmm. And FOSDEM call for papers is open. That's it for news. Any questions there? Okay. Next topic then, anything we needed to discuss on CD events? Well, uh, there is no major updates uh, since uh, the last meeting. So it's officially accepted uh, to the Continuous Delivery Foundation. We will need to do something about uh, uh, Cloud Events plugin. So I think that it should be either renamed to CD events or maybe at least explicitly get integration with uh, CD events. But generally, it's a question of whether we get contributors. Eventually, I will get to that, maybe. But let's see. Okay. Next topic was anything else on CD events? Okay, next topic then, Google Summer of Code. And um, there, Alyssa Tong and Jean-Marc uh, Meeson are um, ready to step up and help. Uh, they're starting planning and looking forward to collecting project ideas, etc. I did see, and I'll reach out to them later. Uh, there's someone in the GSOC channel that said they wanted to help mentor. So good. Okay, that's excellent. Very good. Anything else on Google Summer of Code? Yeah, so there was a question about the Canadian Advocacy and Outreach Seek uh, tomorrow to provide some knowledge transfers. I responded that I cannot. Uh, and uh, basically, I'm happy to help as Orca me too. Uh, I'm not sure what will be my capacity. Uh, but we need to agree on the time when we actually restore uh, office hours. Because currently, advocacy and outreach, think I've been unable to participate in it since September. I mm wrote -hmm. it a few times about uh, changing the time, but uh, yeah. probably well, I've had other things to do too. Great. Well, and and let's assume that we need more than just you to be staffing the office hours, right? I think that makes sense that we should it we shouldn't be just relying on your shoulders to. Well, office hours. Uh, I think that. Uh, Right now, we will have very bad time overlap with Alisa. And Alisa will have really bad overlap uh, with uh, the students. Right. So, and uh, this is a problem because I'm not sure how it's going to work. Uh, but uh, if we need to schedule office hours in a time zone when Alisa is available, it should be the super late uh, in the European time zone or it should be uh, Monday or Tuesday because otherwise I won't be available. Got it, okay. But, uh, yeah, uh, basically I communicated to Alisa a few weeks ago, so I'm waiting uh, till something gets scheduled. Okay. Anything else on Google Summer of Code? 
uh, basically uh, from what I understand from the discussion this year Jenkins uh, would continue independently so this is probably something we need to discuss uh, at the board level or in the developer money at least but it looks like uh, the current consensus at least nobody except traces said that we should be a part of the CDF this year so yeah, that's the I I think we should be independent this year. Now, Alyssa's also started a thread in community.jenkins.io. Would it be okay if we hosted it there instead of the mailing list? Or Oleg, as you're feeling that I think she plans to communicate mailing list, Gitter chat, and community. Could we direct people towards community or is it not not well enough attended yet that we need to keep it in in the in the mailing list i think that community is fine and we just need to start this conversation because okay, we are already right. let's say one month late compared to how we usually start the jsoc ah all right great thanks okay so it's not issue zero, but... All right, next topic then was proposal to cancel governance meeting in two weeks. I'm hoping to be off personally. Um, do any of the rest of you have any objections to canceling in two weeks? No. I have no objections. I'm around either way though. Okay, so plus one from all for attendees great i'll remove it mark remove from the calendar will do and then gavin highlights from the mailing list and the community forum yeah i actually got a, a few early ones this week or recorded written down ones this week um the main ones uh we've been you know mark and uh, damien and I think even myself have been putting uh, mailing, uh, meeting minutes into the community forum, and they have been fairly well received. Um, yeah, just generally, the whatever notes we have in the minutes, not spending a lot of time putting them up just so that they're there. And, you know, as we get more feedback, we'll know what's better to record what's not. But so far across the board, in all the SIGs, it's been well received. Yeah, so infra team meetings doing the same yeah, thing. If you click on the the meeting tag right underneath the title. Oh you'll right. Get, you'll get right. all of them. So yeah, so far they've been well received. They're not being removed from the Google Docs. They're still there. You know, I think infra does it in HackMD, but like it's up to the team to decide where they put it, I guess. But this way at least it's in a single source that everyone can see them you don't have to go find them don't have to go find the calendar invites that kind of thing so it has been well received excellent thank you yeah i i confess i'm really pleased with it it's it's increased the number of views of the recordings it's it's had a positive impact yeah and then i started i found out that um discourse can um send notifications to gitter actually to matrix but gitter so i have I don't know about six rules set up. I'm going to try to keep adding more as I think about them. Um, so, like anything in events or the advocacy key, advocacy and outreach, a SIG tagged are going to that channel. All the generic ask a question, help ones, they go to the Gitter Jenkins channel. That way, people who don't normally check it can see it, see a question was asked, you know, maybe put the information one place or the other or be like, I figured it didn't hurt. It didn't add much traffic. So, so far, I think it's a good thing. People have been pretty happy with it. Excellent. Thank you. I think docs are hooked up as well. Great. Not that there's a lot of docs questions on the right. Board. Sorry that the, the, we're, we're not getting much traffic there. Yep. All right. But yeah. So that's no. me. It's been pretty quiet last, other than the CV, it's been pretty quiet for the last couple of weeks. Great. And so I see Daniel has joined us. Daniel, did you want to share any additional on the CV or, or things that came from that? So, um, well, 
I unfortunately I was a bit too late, so I don't know what you discussed. Um, but the blog post and especially the epic in Jira have all the most up to date information. Uh, we updated the Jira issue uh, continuously, and I currently believe that this is the complete list of all plugins that uh, ever included Log4j, at least among plugins that we currently distribute and their versions that we currently distribute. Which means uh, I downloaded all of the things over the last two days um, and unzipped all of the things and looked inside, and this is the result. Thank you very much. And here's to your internet service provider. Thank you very much to them. Yeah, I probably uh, contributed to the infra bill a bit. <laughs> it's well done. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah, generally, other... I've been even on the comments and stuff, other than the one person who said I have a really old version and how do I fix it? Uh, it's been, you know, people have been pretty good about, you know, going to the right sources. There's combined between the two posts about CV on the forums, there's 6,000 views to those posts, which is even, even a single one is 3,000. And that's more than any other post has ever gotten on the forums. So, you know, people are definitely interested in um, interested in it. Um, I, the only thing I can think of is we probably want to start making sure that the uh, advisory mailing list is uh, more big, public, whatever you want to call it, so that in the future people know that they should be signing up for that uh, email. Um, I, I know I've been telling people when I see them, but you know. A lot of people will read it and just move on. So I don't know if it's in the blog post or not. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I, I, no. I don't recall that we put it there, but it's a good idea that when we've got a vulnerability or when we've got a process like that, we should remind people, hey, subscribe here for your own benefit. So uh, regarding the 6,000 views, is that community Jenkins IO or is that yeah. blog post? Oh, okay. I don't know. I, I do have metrics on Jenkins IO. I can actually look at that as well. I'll yeah, that might notes. be interesting because um, what I've seen is there are uh, a few lists floating around the internet um, of vendor responses to the log4j issue. And just for fun, I looked for Jenkins entries and we're in there and they look uh, they link to the blog post. So that was that was very good that we published that on Friday uh, in yeah. a timely manner. And so that gives people a kind of a landing page for the issue in Jenkins, even if we're not really all that affected. People uh, are very, very eager to find out. Yes. Uh, I will specifically right after this meeting go and find the numbers for the blog post and update the minutes with them. Cool. Thank you. This will take me longer than I think I want to do right now. Great. Thank you. Any other topics we need to discuss before we conclude the meeting today? Um, maybe one question uh, to you, Mark, as uh, Central Team representative. Is anyone uh, handling um, application uh, requests on uh, GitHub? Because I was just uh, checking uh, requests and there are a lot of requests for Codacy, for Travis, uh, and for the GitHub apps and somebody is actually expected to be reviewing them. Uh, Damien's been reviewing them because I accidentally triggered a few and he's been asking me about them. Okay. But he might be doing info only. You know, I would be happy to reject all of them. That's no problem at all. Wait a second. That was if, a, if, if, you, I... if you request something and you can't even be bothered to send an email to the dev list or something along those lines, then it can't be that important. Get, GitHub UI is also a little bit confusing because it might, I've thought a couple of times that it was approved. I'm like, oh, cool, I can use this. And it turns out it's not approved and it sends the request. So it could be something like that where people didn't actually want to use it. They just saw that it was approved and they're like, oh, I could use it. So. So Oleg, I think your original question was, is anybody handling them? I'm, I'm not confident I can assert they are. It, Gavin, it sounds like you're confident that Damien is definitely handling Jenkins dash infra. Yes, because it's happened a few times for me. Okay. 
how would I how would I investigate that? And is that it could only be the admins of the org. Ah, okay. Usually it was me doing that, uh, but uh, yeah. So when I, I was doing uh, uh, transfers, I believe last September, etc. I believe you, Mark, became our admin. I'm not sure whether you took this responsibility at that point or not, uh, but. The uh, sense that it was a bit sporadic. So Uli was handling it, Oliver was handling it from time to time. But okay. I don't think that anyone is looking uh, into that regularly. Yeah, so I, I, I know I have not handled any. And so that's a thanks for the reminder. I'll have to go learn that and understand. So who can, is this one where Daniel can be my guide or Oleg, do I need to get you to be my guide in terms of should we approve it or disapprove it? Always we could just leave it as not anything until someone emails the list and say, hey, I want this. Well, uh, let's be honest, uh, there is no trivial guideline for maintainers. Uh, so when they uh, request access through GitHub web interface, uh, there is no pop-up saying that you should uh, send the email to the mailing list. Yep. But there's also no pop up saying it's approved and it'll be used. Uh, so we're kind of a weird middle ground right now. Yeah, so well, in the past, I, I could certainly take the action of asking them, hey, based on GitHub ID or go find a repository. No, really, I can't, can I? Because I don't necessarily know their email address. You can see a repository, you can see a full request access, and oh, you can okay. basically uh, investigate based on feasibility. So we know that many people try to use policy, so it's basically okay, because yeah, we're exploring uh, having a uh, Jenkins organization uh, for policy, but we have never proceeded with that. So we were looking into that with Zuli, then we had permission issues, and then we gave up. Uh, so everyone sets up our policy individually these days. Uh, for Travis, well, I have no idea why would anyone need Travis uh, in 2021 for Jenkins. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. There's a lot. I don't okay. know why, but people are using Travis. Not, Not tra no, I have no problem with the other use, but for Jenkins repositories, it seems like a weird choice. Right. Well, there are also a circle CI request. Yep. Okay, so that one feels like I've got an action item. If you uh, deny a request, it doesn't say anything to the end user either. So that's why I was like, it's not the end of the world to not do it either. Okay. Got it. All right. Any other topics? Okay, thanks, everybody. I think we can call it a Call it a meeting for today. No meeting in two weeks. We'll meet next in four weeks. Mm -hmm. Bye.